Have so, you been watching WWE lately at all? I actually, I have a DVR now, so I'm gonna, going to be watching it uh, after the fact. But, you know, of course I keep up with it on a regular basis, but I understand there's, there's some things that you want to get off your chest. Well, I just lost my, I, I had access to TiVo for a while, which meant that I, I that I got to fast forward through Mark Henry matches, which just made me so happy that's, inside. Uh, that's a pastime for um, me. That's like, that's like going to a baseball game, fast yeah. forwarding through a Mark Henry match. Right. Um, but I've been watching a lot of it lately. There was one episode in particular recently that really, really angered me, and I went on a huge rant running around my house screaming about how it was... Was anyone listening to you? No, there was nobody there, okay. but, uh, uh, screaming about how, uh, it was the worst, ep- it was it was worse than that one episode of Raw from 2006, you remember where, that ended with the super kick on Hogan? Oh, that terrible, terrible... That was the night I also watched Jaws for the first time. <laughs> yes, yeah, that was a horrible episode when the super kick occurred. Right, there was no redemption for this one, uh, um, unfortunately. It was, you, tough you know... Tough break, tough break for you. That's I'm not going to go into everything that was so horrible, because I have, a like, a half an hour tape recording of all that, <laughs> and I don't have the time. Um, <laughs> should publish that book someday. But, you know, yeah. I don't know. It's just, it seems to me that WWE is being very lazy right now. Well, the first thing I would say to you is they can be. Of course they can be, yeah. But where are you going with that? <sighs> Sheamus is the WWE champion. Yes. I've been watching this man for months wrestle, and mm-hmm. I have yet to see him in a match that I have enjoyed. I actually started watching him before you did. Yes, when you he did. was on ECW. Yes. I told you who he was, and yeah. your reaction was, "Who?" Exactly. Like two months later, he was champion. Yeah, and, and I he can't. I mean, he he had a, he had a match with with uh, on Monday with Evan Bourne, uh, who has been getting a monster push lately, which I love. I love it. Um, but Sheamus has a match with Evan Bourne, mm-hmm. and I swear I'm watching the match. And when Bourne was on offense for the briefest period of time, I'm interested. And then Sheamus gets back on offense, and all of a sudden my brain is just like mm. the crowd reacts the same way, especially the the Monday Night crowd, which is always fun to to gauge where storylines are. You can hear it in the crowd too. The crowd loves Evan Bourne. Yeah. When Sheamus takes over, it's it's not necessarily a chorus of boos as much as it is a chorus of why do we care? And what's what's so great? I don't understand what's so great about well, him anyway. He's big, he's tall, he's white. He fits and people the, can make fun of him. I, first I, you know, off, what's he, the, I'll play devil's advocate here. He fits the bill of what we've always been told the WWE wants, which is a big, strong dude. Um, he's big, muscular. He's also great when they go to Ireland for shows, because he's going to be way over there. Uh, yeah. Probably a lot of European countries will be behind this guy. Okay. And they do a lot of world tours, so that's good. And he's buddies with the right people in the company, from what we've been told. So, right. you know, he's got what it, what he needs to get that position. And at first, I thought, great, a random new champion. No, I thought I'm the okay same thing. This. I thought the same thing. I'm okay with this. Let's see where this but, goes. But I don't see Sheamus developing in that role. I see him as still the same guy who randomly won the world title. You know, he's fine on the mic, honestly. But yeah. he's he's uh, he's got a very unique look, as yeah. we all know. Try taking a picture of him at a live show. <laughs> very unique look, possible. and it works. But as an actual wrestler in the ring, I mean, we were there <laughs> at Mania 26. The crowd kind of died. During his match with Triple H, completely, and that match was insanely boring. And good luck, insanely good luck getting boring. that message. Watching the Mania 26 DVD, where they obviously changed some of the crowd reactions. Yeah, yeah. And well, you've got, so you've got him as champion. You've got Orton as the number one contender, and I like what Orton. I like Orton's personality right now. I like his character, the mm-hmm. tweener viper guy who will RKO anyone from any. Position. A, I, I did watch the the RKO shooting star thing. That was pretty cool. That was probably the coolest move I've seen in wrestling since the first time I saw the Canadian Destroyer. Yes. Yeah. Well, that out there. since the last time I saw the Canadian Destroyer, <laughs> very true, I think. Very Every true. time I see the Canadian Destroyer is the best time I've ever seen a move in wrestling. I don't even know why they have an award for best move, because <clears throat> yeah. he wins it every year. Anyways. Yeah. But, um, so you got Orton as the number one contender, that's fine. Meanwhile, John Cena, no, you know, having had numerous shots to get the title back, has failed. Well, 
couple of shots to get the title back. He lost it, and then he couldn't win it back. He's embroiled in this feud with the Nexus. Which That's a great feud. I feel like. You think so? I feel like okay. it's a great feud. Um, it's getting a lot of young guys over who would otherwise uh, be fodder for WWE superstars or be working in Florida again or be out of a job altogether. They're going to end up that way anyway. They are. But for the time being, it's a great way to use those guys. Yeah. Um, especially since the company is short <clears throat> on talent at the top <clears throat> of the card. Uh, by bringing these guys into the mix, you may actually find yourself a couple more top card guys, a couple of mid card guys, and there's definitely going to be some guys in Nexus who are no longer working after this angle's over. But that's true. I guess it's a it's a it's an influx of of new talent, which is probably and needed. The WWE loves doing the Cena against the world thing. Well, now it literally is Cena against the world. Oh, Cena and his and team against the world now. <laughs> now, now he's got a team. Now he's, he's got, got great Kali on his side. Oh babe. man, anybody who's got great Kali is either going to be wearing a top hat by the end of the show, <laughs> or wind up in a hospital, uh, or with kissing him. knee problems, or making out with him, yeah. which is really good for your career. Ask uh, his his lackey. There, the, they they had the at, they brought out Cena's team. They brought it was Cena, Edge, Jericho, Morrison, r Truth, Kali, and then there was this big, there was kind of pause before the seventh one, and I was pre- kind of excited because I was like, well, maybe what's going to happen? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe Danielson will come out. Yeah, Who knows? that maybe, would make sense. Yeah, or maybe you know. Goldberg. Maybe Goldberg <laughs> come out. They've been teasing him returning. Yeah, but uh, nope, it was Bret Hart. I don't know. He's pretty good with a steel chair. <laughs> as long as his opponent is a sixty-five-year-old yeah. man with two busted hips, as long as his opponent is over the age of sixty and has had multiple uh, surgeries on his hips, Bret Hart's going to dominate that guy. So you know, um, they're doing that. Whatever. Cena's pro. Cena's work is great on that. Wade Barrett. I like him on the mic. He's fine, and um, his finishing move is stupid. But whatever. Um, There's some people out there with some stupid finishing moves that are doing all right. Like, yeah, uh, MVP. Uh, he's not doing great, but you know. But he's pretty recognizable, and you know he's always a consideration for possibly being moved up the card. So. That's true. That's true. But he's got a terrible finisher. You know. So you, but you've got that going. On. I was really pissed at the the Nexus for the 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 three straight main event no contest because I was like, that's not how you book a show. But now they've been doing it a little bit differently. I mean, you know, the uh, the six on one handicap was. Well, you and I know too. You mentioned the no contest. You and I know when I was keeping statistics of matches. Oh, those would piss you off. That no contest matches were a monthly occurrence, sometimes two or three times a month on a regular basis. So, <laughs> you know, that's nothing new for the WWE. It's just it's unfortunate that you know that, that they go that route that they can't find a creative way to end a match and then have some sort of storyline resolution. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Overall, I think that Raw is. You know, the Nexus people add some depth to it, but not enough. And right now, they're at the point where they're being... They're not as bad off as SmackDown, but they're at the point where they're being forced to use their filler time on matches with Santonio... Santonio. (laughs) Santonio Holmes. I mean, um... Santino, Santino Santino Morella and and Vladimir Vladimir Kozlov. And then they've got their horrible women's division with Alicia Fox, the stripper champion. Uh, Oh, yeah... And um, the uh, Raw Anonymous GM, annoying as hell, and I want it to stop. It's annoying. It's probably Chavo Guerrero. That's all I'm going to say. 